Hello YouTube, welcome to Sunday in the shop. It is supposed to be, if they're not lying, hit maybe 40 degrees today. So, I never can tell you the date, I always forget. Friday was the 28th, today I think it's the 29th, Saturday. This will be the last Saturday of the month. Uh, Magdad 357. See that? See that nice to have that? has a video on both of these uh, the cleaner yeah so so whatever but I do like the wax and I'll show you why and I'm gonna try flitz polish so I went ahead and got this whole little kit here it comes with a micro cloth which is how big I do not know 16 inches square so this is gonna be cut up in little bitty pieces It'll probably be a little like uh, little four inch squares or something. So you can do the math. How many pieces you're going to get. You know, the four inches square, you're probably going to have what? 16 of them? You do the math. Do that, do that for me there. Uh, I experimented a little bit with, with it. What I did was, I take pretty good care of this. This actually stays in the house, don't go with it. So it's my everyday carry to have set in my chair if I need to do something. Uh, I really did like the wax on the plastic. You know, the wax here. The cleaner is like so-so. It's water-based. It, it just, you know, I clean the dirt off. But this is about how clean I keep it. This is the one I took the black paint off. You can see where it says Kershaw. Well, I don't know if you can tell, but I did this for about two minutes. But boy, I'll tell you what, when you first flip this around, blew the reflection on that, blew the light. That's just two minutes on a little piece of tissue, Kleenex. And I rubbed and I rubbed it. I had just a small drop. It wasn't even big as a dime. So I was really impressed with just rubbing. So imagine with a Dremel tool and your little buffer pad you get. Did you see them little white? things you put on your Dremel tool because if you look at this side it might look shiny but it's all smeary see look down it, it's just with buff whatever abrasive wheels and some polish on my big drill thing but that really impressed me see when I first turn it over look at that plastic look at that really impressed I mean, look at that look up look look at how nice that does look now you go like this, sure, it's going to be reflective, but, you know, I can tell the difference. So, I'm really impressed with using this actually when I'm using a machine to buff with the stuff. And it did turn black. It was nasty black. Because I just wiped this thing off. But, it gets used for a letter opener, clean your fingernails, or whatever. This side has no, <clears throat> excuse me, this side has no wax. This side has wax. I was really impressed by the wax out. It made the black look nice. And it's not shiny. This is supposed to have like carnauba wax or whatever in it. Uh, on Amazon you can find it. I always say I don't get paid to show you this stuff. And this video is not even monetized on Sunday. Here's the stuff I'm really enthused on using. I've been out of gun blue all winter long. And this is paste. And there's mixed reviews. But I watched him do a nail set with it. You can find his video, Nail Set Punch. Uh, what did I actually send him? So, see, I had to return the plug there. I think I'm going to like this stuff. Because I can leave it on long and it don't run all I do a lot of small stuff and this stuff is running all over using Q-tip. and You know, the liquid stuff's okay. But I want to try this for smaller parts and things. I might want to leave it on longer. So that's all there is to say on that. I cannot tell you the prices. We're going to guess. This is probably 19 bucks, okay? This is probably like $7 for this tube. And I'm sorry I can't tell you the size of the tube. I will take a picture of it. If it says at the back. I said, I do not think it even says anywhere that I looked earlier. It's just a tube of it. So... Enough of that. We're going to go off and I'm going to show you the 
work I'm doing on my stove, how I'm making the lever to open the door. So we're going to get warmed up a little more. So stay tuned, and we'll be back showing you how we're working on that. We may polish something yet today. We do not know what kind of day it's going to be, so hang in there. I know you want me to polish something with it. Okay, we saved this job just for Sunday in the shop. Here's my lever that's going to open the door, okay? Now, I left me a half inch case. I wanted to put a knob on it, and I want to use the whole travel of this, okay? So it would be different than if you want to do it less travel, okay? Now this is what we figured. This only has to open up one inch, okay? So here's what we did. We drew a line. We're using this side of the thing, okay? Okay, now we're going to move it from this side, okay, to this side. But this is all approximate, okay? That's the full travel, okay? So I never took this stuff in school. Okay, now we know that. That's as far as it'll travel. It'll go a long ways out here because the lever is longer, right? I think we all understand how a lever works. We want to find where it just goes one inch. Well, that is this line right here. Obviously, everything's magnetized around here. Just disregard this and how this crosses. This is all approximate. This will just get the whole center. And I can get this bolt through the stove, through the door. So there's one inch of travel, okay? I think you're with me. Now, what we did was, we got our rod marked with some tape. And we come up here to about to the center. See, it's about the center. Now we'll close this. We'll move this up here. And we'll bring this up to our tape where it's closed. And then we'll come here. We're off a little bit. See? We're off a little bit here. But what we'll do is we're going to drill a hole there. We can drill more than one hole. But we're going to drill a hole where we say it's right. Get, get in frame there. We'll be back after we do that. This will have that famous Z-Bend. This is what, 332nd welding rod I made the grade out of? It's easier to bend than that 8 inch welding rod stuff that I had, that copper coated. Have you ever seen me use it? So let's do that. Let's, let's drill a hole here, okay? And then we'll test it. We'll be back after we do that. Then we'll move this rod back and forth and play with it. I said, disregard how this looks. This is not centered. You know it's not. And we're going off this side. We're not going off the center of, the, of this metal, which we should. I'm not going to use that much brain, brain cells. We know that this moves an inch of travel about where I put it at. I think you can see the whole thing. I can put some knot butter. We want to use the whole thing. You could probably make it so you only have to move it that far. See, watch the lever out here. It's going to move a lot more. See that? To the middle. You might be doing this on a carburetor on an engine or something. So, that's why I figured it's, it's worth watching this. You may be trying to make some throttle linkage. How am I going to figure out if I'm going to move that? The throttle only has to move a half inch. I've got a lever out here. i got I got to reach into where I'm going to mount it. And, and then I'm going to need some kind of arm. And always make everything bigger. There. So we don't get confused. Let's put a hole in here and see what happens. Let's put a hole in here and bend the rod over and stick it in the hole and see how much it moves. So stay tuned. This could get edgy. That means edgy on my nerves. If I start sounding all growly or grumpy when I come back, it means I was a Sunday in the shop. Let it all out. Just let it out and get it out of your system. <laughs> if this ain't fun, I'm not going to do it. This is going to be a nice dope. Oh, this is my tray. You'll see it sometime. This is when the age is followed. I'm, I'm sure you assume that's, that's what that is. That's a tray. It was kind of hard to make that braze it, so I didn't even want to go into it. I'll wait till another day. Okay, we're talking too much. Let's get this job done. 
Okay, pay no attention to my crappy Z-Band. All I have was needle nose vice grips. I know it's way too big of a Z-Band, but it would not fall out. Okay, we went as far as re refineness of finding the exact center of that piece of metal. That's what the center line is on there. Okay, there's my one inch mark. Can you see it? Where I made it real thick. Okay, let's put this about... There we are. We're over here. Okay, there's our tape mark, okay? So we're going to open the door back there. We're not going to open the door. We're just going to show you how the far moves. Okay, we come over here. That's about an inch and an eighth. But, if we come over here to the center, we're about seven eighths. So you can fine tune it back here where you want to put the bracket. What I'm going to do, so this only needs to open an inch. I'm just going to make it open further. We're going to make that easier. As long as this right here, when it's closed, is there, okay? And I can put the rod over here. That's going to be taking the rod at an angle. You know it would be a lot easier if it was like this, which I probably will. We don't care what it looks like at the you know, it does not have to be. Oh, I said, put Loctite in the low bolts and nuts. They fell out twice on me. There you go. You might be doing this on a carburetor or something. Oop, it went too far. Is it just fun? Does it make you want to pull your hair out? I don't have much left. It said, I never took no geometry, trigonometry. I can't tell you the pitch of a roof, I just, whatever looks good. I know how to make an angle or find an angle. And everything, you ever know, you get that feeling? Come on, I know you guys are like, give, give anything with a trigger on it, what are you going to do? Um, um, you know you're going to do it, you hear it in your mind, I know you are. Don't lie, just admit it. There, let's find something else to do. So you'll see this all done in another video. So we might put some little round knob or something on there. See how far it would be if it was halfway open, sticking way out? It's either probably going to be wide open and start it, or shut it down. And then we might have it open like, say, this far. Go back here and do it. it. It may be open like that. So your knob's probably going to be like this when the stove finally gets burning. You know, somewhere in this range. Slido lever, let's call that. The Slido intake lever. That is an air intake. And I tested it smoke test with some incense. And when you shut this door, it does shut down on the stovepipe. And this will not have a control in three holes under there. So it can always get air. So it worked pretty good. I plugged those three holes. It did not do a whole lot when the smoke was coming out. Of course, the stick of incense does not make a whole lot of smoke. But it really did come out when I had this open. Oh boy. And I had the incense probably sitting about in the middle on the grate. You know, to give it a fair test where the smoke was coming from. Okay, we talked about it enough. I said, Sunday in the shop. Like I said, I can get to this inside to put a nut in a bolt. So we can tighten that down and then you'll have a bracket and then two nuts to lock lock it nut it so we can get that in there we'll just thread it in with a piece of wire or something so the bolt sticks through and it'll tighten I said you don't have to put a wrench on some of these little bolts on the nut you spin it enough times or the nut, it's going to tighten up we got to stop this there we go it is kind of interesting though Okay, break time. Okay, let's end this video with some new tools. And I'll take a nice picture of this. 130 seconds, 230 seconds is a 16, then 330 seconds. And carpenters do that. That way you don't get confused. Made in USA. Okay, it took me probably two years to get these from Menards. I would go in there and ask them about nail set punches okay i gave them the name they would take me over to the punches and chisels and i tell them no 
don't even send me there because I've been there, okay? So I finally gave up. Well, one day I was in there, I said, you know, I'm going to walk over there. Well, let's back up. I went on the website and they said they had him, okay? And they always said they had him on the website when the store could not find him. Everybody at work there. You know how some of them people are. They want paid to go to work, but they don't want to help any customers. I can rant about that all day. We've all went through it. What does NPVP mean? It's actually on the tool, too. Anyway, I go over there, with the, and they've got a whole selection. They've got big foot long punches. They've got some good, and I went to the company, look, they have a good selection in mind of all kinds of big punches and stuff. So let's show you the biggest one. Four safety goggles, 332nd and NP. I don't know, NP to me means national pipe thread or whatever on fittings where you're putting in a, you know what I mean, you're tapping for a fuel fitting for an elbow for a water pipe or something, but these are pretty nice. Well, I wanted them to modify it to make brass rivets. See, that goes over the head of a little finishing nail. So you drive it in the wood. When you're doing flooring, molding, you know, to trim around a window or a door, that's what a nail set does. It sets it below the wood and you fill a little hole in. I want to modify these and then someday practice making little brass rivets. Like, say you're restoring a knife or a pocket knife. So, it will, if you had like the first part in a vise or something and then mushed it down to make a head, and put it through the pocket knife and it sticks up so you need to mush the other side. I think I think you figure out what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna modify the biggest one because that's what size brazing rod I usually use. Aren't these nice? They're an odd design. I like the antique ones, but these are really nice. They really are. And I cannot tell you what I paid for them. I don't think it was $10. It could have been only like $5 or something. I have no idea what I paid for them. I wanted them, so I bought them. But I said, my store has a whole selection. There's ones that are a foot long. You go to the company and you look through all I mean, they had a whole bunch. So I think what, what it was is they started selling more of the company's product, right? And they went and found these wherever they had them hid. They could have been upstairs and hid away, never put on the shelf. And then they started showing up, see, because like I said, it was two years. It had to be two years. I'm not exaggerating either. Every time I go, it started getting where I'd go in there. Every time I'd go in there, I'd ask him just, just because I was irritated. i go, let me know if you find him. Here's the brand name. Don't take me over to them punches and chisels by the tools or whatever, because that's not where they're at. And that's the first place I'd see him walking to. It's like, they're going to show me. Yeah, you think. Tell this old guy. Oh, there is an old guy that works in my local Menards. And he'll find it if it's there. Uh, if you got it on your cell phone and you show him the stock number. I went through that with a set of shells one time. And this lady got all stinny. But, well, there's, there they are. No, it's the brand name of the show. It's not the size I want. Turns out we went about. 40 feet away from where the shelving is, and out in the middle of the aisle, there was a big pallet floor where the forklift just dumped them in the middle of the store. It had my size. See? Somebody didn't stock the shelves, they just brought them out and dumped them because they was on sale. So that means they were probably hidden in the back room until they went on sale. See? There's another thing. Whoa, it's out of season. We can go on this for hours. Don't go in there and try to buy one of them propane heating stoves or electric heater in the summertime. It's out of season. That don't mean they don't have it in the back. They're just not going to go get it, but it's out of season. Okay. It's duck season. Right. You ever remember that cartoon? It's rabbit season. That ain't going to work. Duck season. It's rabbit season. It's not. It's duck season. It's duck season. Shoot. No. <clears throat> okay, we're off on a whole nother. What do they call that? On a tangent? That comes from the machinist guys. There you go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me ramble on. That's what Sunday shop's for. I said, I want your pin. Ain't these nice?
Ain't these a nice tool? They really are. They're a nice tool. They, they feel good. And when you pick up something like this, and it's not cheapy, gaudy looking metal, it's a gray kind of a, I don't know, maybe some gunmetal gray or something. When you pick up a tool like this to use it, you know it was made here, right in the Midwest, right close to me. I live in Iowa, I'm in Kansas. I could drive to the factory on a field trip someday, take a couple of, and bring home a trunk load. There you go, right here. We're gone. Thanks again for watching.